we were in the Super Bowl. So proud of the Atlanta Falcons for making it that far. You set the standard for our division. Unfortunately, we came up a wee bit short. However, I just want to take the time out to say, you know, one thing about, first of all, hold your head up because even if you make mistakes and even if you have a failure, it actually is a learning experience. And that's what I got when, you know, um, we had to take that big loss. And of course, I'm a big trash talker when it comes to the game. So I had to eat a lot of crow <laughs> today. God was just helping me with humility. <laughs> So for all of my Patriot compadres, congratulations to Tom Brady and his amazing victory. But Falcons, you rise and we'll just have to rise next year. <laughs> so that is my little blurb for the for the Dirty Birds today. And, and cheer up, Atlanta. We got a lot to be proud of. So with that being said, I am excited to have an amazing pastor join me tonight and just literally every person that I have spoken with that knows him inside out feels like he is the most amazing man of God that they've ever come in contact with. He is so humble. I can't pull it out of him, but I definitely get it from everybody else. Um, so please welcome Pastor Ken Loring to the show. How are you this evening? Man, if I was any better, I'd explode. I'd explode. Like you poured in a little healing oil from that uh, Super Bowl last night and uh, kind of licking my uh, trash talk wound that I did as well. <laughs> but we're glad to be here. Thank you so much, Angela, and Grace went away for uh, permitting us to be on this uh, awesome broadcast with you. And just want to say thank you. And, you know, Georgia is my second home. I lived there for uh, almost 20 years. Amen. And, uh, but now we're yeah, but now we're located back near Fort Lauderdale Beach, Florida. Yes, yes, which I miss the beach, so I understand. <laughs> um, but <laughs> we'll be coming up that way this weekend. That is so, awesome. So. Is that right? Yes, yeah, be coming up there this weekend, definitely. All right. So well, listen. Going to be at uh, Christ Center Tabernacle on the 12th on Sunday. Uh, that's located in Jonesboro, Georgia. Oh, and, awesome. Uh, Pastor Tim and Cheryl Huska. Uh, the pastors at 8049 Fair Oaks Court in Jonesboro, Georgia. And they can just contact me if they need any further. But I look forward to being back with my Georgia family. You know what? That is awesome. Let me make you laugh. I'm taking vacation. I will be in Florida. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> well, what part of Florida are you coming to? <laughs> I am actually coming to Orlando and Tampa, and then I'm going to stay on Clearwater Beach. <laughs> <laughs> it is beautiful. absolutely beautiful yes yes you know that's home for me most of my family moved from jacksonville florida to uh orlando in the tampa area so i always get a chance to go home and say hey i miss the water <laughs> Amen, amen. And I, I miss uh, some of the hills and the mountains there when you get into yes. Georgia. So yes 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 amen so listen, I want to discuss, first of all, you have an amazing ministry, which is Armor of God Ministries. That is your church, correct, in Fort Lauderdale, Florida? Yes, ma'am. Awesome. And I want you to explain to everyone, you were recently recognized. And I just cannot let our interview go without acknowledging this huge honor that you've been given, which was a presidential award for service. Is that correct? Yes. No? Yes, ma'am. Yes, it was uh, the Lifetime Presidential Achievement Award. Uh, it was actually written and presented when uh, President Obama was in office uh, by Thank President you. Obama. Uh, but, I, you know, it doesn't come, you know, like I say, you don't receive, nobody is successful by themselves. That's right. And nobody receives a great award without having great people around you. And that's the key and the secret to it. I might have got them through my life. And uh, they also recognized uh, my wife also and gave her the award. I think she I think she got the award for putting up with me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, it was such an honorable, uh, honoring experience, humbling experience. And, 
you know, you, you people like, of course, God, your Father, is that uh, the Lord, Lord of my life. Uh, yes. Nothing can be made possible but by Him, and all Amen. the glory goes to Him. But people like, of course, my wife that stands behind me, with me, really beside me, and uh, you know, uh, nothing, none of this would be possible without having a great mate in your life. Amen. Don't make like Lisa; she's definitely a Proverbs thirty-one lady. Amen. And, uh, to the to the max, and uh, it wouldn't be possible without her. And uh, people like, you know, someone that was on your show not too long ago, Dr. Loretta Pierce. Uh, Loretta Pierce nominated us, and uh, we have a new project going with her and I. Uh, awesome. We are actually, she's already hot on it, but uh, Loretta is uh, looking to, and I'm teaming with her, looking to put food pantries in the poverty-stricken areas of every public school in our nation. Mm, and Loretta that's awesome. Has only on the red has already placed them in Chicago area, Philadelphia, uh, New Jersey, I believe it is, and some of these southern states. But guess what? We are on board, and thank, I have to thank also a lady, uh, Florida State Representative of the 92nd District, uh, Patricia Williams. Amen. Uh, she made way that I can get these food pantries in South Florida. With oh, Dr. that's Rumsey wonderful. So just blessed to be able to do these kind of projects. I, and that is what I get so excited about. Well, first I want to tell you, Loretta has, I've not had the opportunity to interview with her yet, but it is coming. Um, we definitely have discussed it. So I cannot wait because she has such an amazing story of overcoming which the world needs to, yeah. you know, be able to hear and understand yeah. her benevolence because it's such a huge thing. I think what is most important and what resonates with me as it relates to your ministry, Pastor, is we're in a time where a lot of people feel like the, the church has failed them. They feel like everybody yeah. has become so traditional that they're not yeah. doing anything as it relates to reaching the people. So many people in the world feel judged, they feel condemned when they walk through the church door or that they're never, ever good enough. What I absolutely, what attracted me to your ministry, even before we even taught, was every time on social media you see something, someone is thanking you for what you have done in the community. We talked about this before, and I said, I know that it does take a team, and you're so humble in the fact that you give everybody the accolade especially for getting that kind of award but in in actuality i say all the time you did not have to obey god when he gave you the command to do service a lot of us okay are told i thought about it a few times <laughs> <laughs> it's, and because every time, you know, he gives us a directive does not always mean we're going to follow it. So the fact that you were mm -hmm. obedient in that area and the reason behind your service is that it's impactful. And that is what mm -hmm. means so much. We, you're, you're a giving church. You're a church that actually is in the community. We were laughing. I was uh, talking to you the other day and you're, you know, and I think we were just kind of I am in real quick and I'm saying, I'm going to get that. I got your information. I just need the bio and the pick. And you're like, okay, but I, I got to help these kids out in the street right now, Angela, but I will get back to you. And I'm thinking when I got off, you know, from typing, I'm like, this is what I'm talking about. Like you are a pastor that people adore and love your family um Mimi who was you know your did you say she was your assistant at the church yeah she's our assistant uh she's a little lady of a million hats but uh, she's more <laughs> like a daughter like a daughter <laughs> yes and she spoke so highly of the ministry she's from Haiti and and feels like you're her other set of parents that means so much at a time where, you know, again, people have become so traditional when they go to church. It's about how much money you can give and, you know, what you're supposed to be doing in your life. But when you're actually in the streets and you're talking to these kids who are suffering and you're talking to the people, that means that speaks volumes. So with that being said, how did all of this get started? <laughs> well, 
Boy, you 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 are about to get real and raw here. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's when I found out about the answer. Seems like you have done your background and study work uh, on me and our ministry. Yes, sir. And, uh, so now you know how to get it real. I heard now on my background that Angela Foxworth gets real and raw on her praise <laughs> radio. So I guess we're going to go there tonight. First of all, yes. first of all, one important uh, topic that you hit right there is you're right people people almost are to the point to where they don't want to go to church anymore right and we have five different churches on each block and they all have about uh, 40 to 50 people in them and you know and if you you know today I heard a little stat that you're considered a mega church if you had 300 or more now when wow. it used to be, if you had 1500 or more you were a mega church wow so we still of course need plenty of those too um, but Something that you hit that's very important, first of all, is you talk about, um, you know, sometimes about how church is failing. Well, you know, if there's no perfect pastors, and I'm certainly definitely not one of those, and, uh, and I'm far from it. And, uh, you know, and there's no perfect churches. Uh, right. That's the first kind of thing I want to come back with. And what I love about the Word of God is uh, the Bible said Elijah was a man of his like passions. He had troubles. He had struggles that he dealt with. As soon as he had a great victory in one place, he was running from his enemy in another place. Yes. David, who was a prophet, priest, and king, as we saw, he went through his struggles. And I just, you know, I thank God for the Bible, Angela, because it doesn't only talk about the victories. It talks about the failures. Amen. Most of our Bible consists of the failures that men have made. Amen. And they were kings, they were priests, they were men and women of God that made their failures, but God just took that failure and made them a victory. He took them from being a victim and made them a victor. Amen. And, uh, you, know, you, you know, so that's the first thing I want to talk about just briefly as you hit it, because it's so vital, uh, that point that you made. And by no means am I close to being a perfect pastor. I have my faults. I have my things. And you were talking about how I've dedicated and committed to the Lord. Well, there has been many times in my over 30 years of ministry, I have run uh, from the offices of the fivefold ministry when God called me. And I wasn't one of these old happy-go-lucky, thank you, Jesus, I got called to the ministry. Uh, no, man, I ran from that thing. I yes. ran from that thing. When I saw everything pastors went through, and I saw everything my pastors and mentors went through, I said, no, I'm not doing this, man. And uh, when God began to reveal to me that there was a calling on my life, actually through another church I visited, and, you know, and he had a prophetic flow, and I actually told the uh, gentleman, I had to apologize to him later when God did call me into the ministry. He said, you've got a great calling on your life. You're going to go around the world. You're going to be on television. And all those things come to pass. But at that time, at 18, 19 years old, when he told me that, I turned. I didn't know anything about prophetic ministries. I didn't know anything about right. the gifts of the Spirit. And I told that minister right there, I said, look, you might have got it right on these other people, but you got it wrong on me. And he pointed his finger at me and he said, surely as the power of God is in this place, it's going to rest on your life. And boom, I was out, the, it was a tent meeting, and I was out in the dirt, on the dirt of that tent meeting when he wow. spoke that word to me. So it, it's kind of been that journey ever since. I'm 57 today, ever since I've been 18. And there's been a lot of vaccination. I'm just going to be real and raw. Been a lot of vaccination in my life. I never always walk the straight road. But you know what? To God be the glory for his grace and mercy. Amen. He's taught me through great mentors and great pastors like the one I just mentioned in Jonesboro and also uh, Bishop Harold Ray in West Palm Beach, Florida, Redemptive Life. People like these being my mentor. Yes. Uh, Dr. Murdoch in Dallas uh, with his wisdom teachings that he's given me. Uh, you know, there's just so many people you've got to give credit to because, like I said, nobody makes it by themselves. We're all flawed people. Yes. You know, judge, judgmental people are the damaged people. Yes. And the damaged people try to damage others. So we got to leave the judgment to God, you know, with that. Amen. But you brought such an important uh, point there uh, that we couldn't let that pass by without discussing that a little bit. So at Armor of God Ministries here in Fort Lauderdale, and we encourage anybody in the Fort Lauderdale area, we hope you'll come and visit with us there. Uh, we 
are an out of the box ministry. We Amen. have nothing like the traditional. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> we are. <laughs> we, I love know, it. Uh, we are out in the streets. Uh, yes. We are with the roughest of the rough and the toughest of the tough, and uh, we're just out there reaching them for the Lord Jesus Christ, and you know, hopefully, we're transforming lives. You know what? I absolutely love what you just said. I, I, I've got to take a break, but when we come back, I'm going to talk about, um, or I would like to share with our audience the things that you have had to endure as you have started this ministry. And I also want to focus on what I find is most beautiful about your ministry. I'm not going to tell you what that is now. I'll wait till we come back, but we're going to get uh, a little bit more close and personal with you. Just give me a few moments. Listen, you guys are listening to Pastor Ken Lauren. I am so excited to have him in here. I say in the studio, even though we're Skyping, he's, he's there in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, but I absolutely feel like you're right here with us, and I appreciate everything you're doing. You guys are listening to the Angela Foxworth Show right here on 108 Praise Radio, and we will be right back, like Chuck Willery says, in 2 and 2. I'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> are you are you happy so far? Yes. <laughs> I, I love it. 